My name is Alexander Glen Camden. My name is Sergeant Josh Hansen. I was a staff sergeant in the United States Infantry. I was a medic in the Army. Our country is blessed to have people who are willing to sacrifice for something greater than themselves. At a young age, I realized how lucky we were to, to live here, and I just wanted to, to give back. This is the best decision I've ever made, and I would do it again in a heartbeat if I was given the opportunity to. Many of these vets not only have physical injuries, injuries that are easy to see, but they're also dealing with PTS and TBI. Lots of times we do such a good job of hiding it that we don't get the help that we need. I found I was in my room a lot of times, just kind of playing things out in my head. I knew I had to change something about my life. I was actually dying. I wanted to draw attention not only to their courage, but to the fact that They've contributed once, and they need to know they can contribute again. I've done more in my life with one leg than I probably ever would have done with two, and I just I feel I feel very lucky and very fortunate. There's a lot of veterans uh, that die by suicide. Get them out of the house and doing things and back together with other veterans is, has been huge. Blacksmithing is my form of expression, and it's become my therapy. It's become what I do. It's, it's my healing. Wow, look at her. That's me. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I guess it does kind of resemble Brad Pitt, you know? <laughs> that's pretty cool. I love that hat. It's really cool that the president actually thought of, of painting me. Each one of these paintings was painted with a lot of respect and affection. I know each person I painted. I was thinking about their backgrounds, their service, their injuries and their recovery. And so uh, there's a lot of compassion and a lot of energy in each one of these paintings. We're happy to have Savannah joining us now along with some of the veterans featured in Portraits of Courage, Army Sergeant Major Chris Self, Army First Lieutenant Melissa Stockwell, Army Sergeant First Class Michael Rodriguez, and Air Force Master Sergeant Israel Del Toro. We call him DT. <laughs> Good morning to all of you. Great to have you here. Good morning. Good morning. I wish everybody could see how all of you interact when the cameras aren't on because these are true friendships that are among all of you, which made your job, I would think, all the harder. Here you are, they're portraitist. You have to capture the essence of them. Yeah. What was going through your mind? How did you feel? Well, I've, uh, first, uh, that I want to sell a lot of books to raise money for uh, helping our vets, which is where the proceeds of the book go. Secondly, uh, I got to know uh, all four of them uh, pretty well, and uh, I felt great pride. And uh, people ask me, do you miss being president? The answer is not really. But I miss saluting people who are volunteered to wear the uniform, and all four of them did. Yeah, you, you have said to people over the years, as all presidents do, that the most sobering responsibility of a commander-in-chief is making a decision yeah. to put Americans into harm's way. Getting to know these people, and, and especially in your post-presidential years, do you have a new view of that? No, still hard. It was a hard decision to make. My, my view is this. Uh, how can we help these uh, uh, great Americans transition from the military to civilian life? Uh, they've got visible wounds. They've got invisible wounds. But all four of these uh, vets are willing to stand up and say, I had an issue and I want to help somebody else. And so it, we, we've done a lot of work on this issue and peer-to-peer -peer counseling helps a lot. And there are groups like the Langone Center here or the Cohen Vet Centers around the country that are able to help vets. But it starts with, and this is why these vets are very important, uh, vets saying, you know, I got, a, I got a problem. In other words, there's a lot of denial because there's a stigma. And so our message is it's courageous to talk about it and, and seek help. Well, first I have to say, did he get the portraits right? Did he capture you guys? Yes. I said so. Chris, you said so. he made you better looking. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Talk about, because you're someone who has talked about the invisible injury, the injury that you can't see. What's your message to people? What do you want them to understand about this transition to civilian life? Uh, I think the message is that uh, first don't keep it to yourself because like the president said, the peer-to-peer -peer counseling, peer-to-peer -peer mentorship to through those hard times are the best way to come out with it and you know, find someone that you can trust, you can talk to and make sure you're discussing those feelings for those wounds that people can't see. By the way, this guy was in combat twice on one leg. Yeah, the stories of actual perseverance are unbelievable. Melissa, you lost a leg when your convoy hit an IED in Iraq. What has transitioned to civilian life been like for you? 
You know, I feel very fortunate to have, um, you know, the mentorship, the, the camaraderie, really, of the military. And being backed by the president, I mean, I can't tell you enough about going to the president's ranch with on the W-100 and riding a mountain bike with other fellow wounded soldiers and just really showing that there is life after disability. I mean, I've done more in my life with one leg than I ever would have done with two. So I'm a, I feel like a very lucky girl. Ryan, you were memorable to the president because he said you were, other than a rock star we know, the only one who was wearing sunglasses when you first met. And can you talk about why and the significance of that? Um, well, it was one of those uh, traumatic brain injuries I had. I was very uh, sensitive to light and uh, I would hide my double vision quite a bit. So I was always winking, you know, so I could see one thing. So that's what I did. But then, uh, you know, after a you know, visit to the boss's ranch, there was, you know, I saw the connection he had with us, you know, and you know, when you have sunglasses on, you lose that connection with someone. And I used to hi use it to hide behind. I was hiding um, what I was dealing with. But when I saw that he reached out and he opened his heart and home uh, to us in, in the caring way that, that President Bush does, it inspired me to try and connect with people as well. So. Yeah, it's damn nice of Rod to take the glasses off because it, <laughs> it was awesome to paint his eye. <laughs> DT. Um, you are, talk to me first about some of the injuries you sustain, and I also want to mention, even as you do, you're still active duty, aren't you? I am. I'm still active duty. Uh, the first 100% disabled airman ever to re-enlist in the Air Force. Uh, so I'm pretty uh, happy that I'm still able to serve, because it's hard to find a job, uh, a job that you truly love. And I love being in the military. I love being with these guys, you know. You know, did I ever think of myself as be this person that people look up to me, I just know, you know, my, this is never going to be my ideal job. I was going to be an operator, you know, do my job, call in airstrikes. But my injuries, you know, 80% of my body has third degree burns. You know, I was almost, I almost died three times. You know, they told me I'll never walk again. I'll be on a respirator for the rest of my life. And, and uh, I will still be in the hospital another year and a half after when I woke up from my four months in a coma. And, Two months after they told me that, I walked and breathed on my own out of the hospital. Mm. Well, your spirit is undeniable, all of you. Now, I'm not going to put you on the couch, President Bush, because I know you wouldn't like that. But you know what Rod said? He said he thinks this painting of portraits is as therapeutic and beneficial for you as it is for you. No them. question about it. Uh, it's beneficial because, one, it keeps me active, so I'm not sitting on a couch chewing potato chips. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Two, it's one of the great learning experiences. And three, it keeps me uh, really in touch with our vets in a unique way. I mean, I love her. When I was president, I said, I'm going to have your back in a minute. And uh, in the post-presidency, uh, I, I vowed that I'm going to help our vets as much as I possibly can for the remainder of my life. Chris, we have about 45 seconds left. What don't Americans get? What don't we get about transitioning back to civilian life for a lot of you folks? Uh, I don't think they get the fact that when veterans transition back to civilian life, they don't need a handout, they don't want favors, they want opportunities. All right? So I, get the opp I have the privilege of helping veterans now in my post-military job and helping them find employment. So uh, from employers I hear all the time, hey, we want to hire vets, we can't find them. Well, that sounds like an excuse to me, you know. They're out there, give them the opportunity, they'll, they'll excel in your yeah, business. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, these vets don't want any self-pity. You know, they don't want to be pitied. They want to be helped. Right, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to continue this discussion with the five of you on Facebook Live, but we thank you thank so you. much for coming in and thank, thank you. you for doing this project, Honor President Bush. Let's keep right. this conversation going. We'll Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.